Hello, I'm Dr. E. Barry Gordon, and this is the 17th video in my series on testosterone deficiency. Today's topic is an extremely common and an extremely serious disease, type 2 diabetes. It's going to take two videos to present this disease and the role testosterone plays in it. In this one, I'll discuss the disease itself, and in the next one, the many, many studies showing how testosterone deficiency and testosterone replacement affects it. Type 2 diabetes is so common that probably most of you watching this video either have type 2 diabetes or have friends and relatives with the disease. I hope these videos convince many of you to become proactive with your health and your life, to not let complacency bring on premature disability and death to not let the refusal of doctors to view the disease of testosterone deficiency with an open mind rob you of many years of healthy, vigorous life. I think you'll understand why I feel this way after you see the next video. For those of you not quite familiar with diabetes, there are two basic types. Type 1 is also called juvenile diabetes. In this condition, there is an absolute lack of insulin. Less than 10% of diabetics are type 1. I know of no connection between testosterone and type 1 diabetes. The other 90 plus percent have type 2 diabetes, which is also known as adult onset diabetes. To understand type 2 diabetes, you need to know that the primary function of insulin is to transport glucose molecules, sugar, from the blood into muscle cells. In type 2 diabetes, insulin becomes less effective. The medical terms used to describe this phenomenon are either increased resistance to insulin or reduced sensitivity to insulin. Because blood sugar becomes higher when it can't get into muscle cells, in the early stages of type 2 diabetes, the body tries to compensate by raising the insulin level in the blood to higher than normal amounts. After a period of time, the pancreas, which produces the insulin, becomes exhausted and insulin levels drop. Today, type 2 diabetes, or insulin resistance, is included in what is called the metabolic syndrome, a group of diseases that are commonly seen together. The others include high blood pressure, triglyceride and cholesterol abnormalities, and abdominal obesity. Because of the very common association, many in the medical world make the assumption that all people with the metabolic syndrome also have cardiovascular disease. There are various statistics about the numbers of people with type 2 diabetes. 8 to 24 million in this country, over 150 million worldwide, and increasing rapidly. It's estimated that one in three people born after 2000 will develop diabetes during their lifetime. Type 2 diabetes usually begins after the age of 40. Note the age. So many major health issues, like breast and prostate cancer, commonly begin around 40, which also happens to be the most common time for the onset of symptoms of testosterone deficiency. A few years after I began treating increasing numbers of patients with testosterone, I began to suspect that the hormone might be having a beneficial effect on diabetes. The longer I treated my diabetic patients, the more I saw that testosterone replacement was significantly improving their diabetes control. For those of you familiar with the terms, patients' glycohemoglobin, or hemoglobin A1c, lessened significantly. Those with min minimally elevated numbers dropped into the non-diabetic range. Patients even began to have low sugar episodes. Most had to reduce their medication, whether they were on pills or on insulin. Several stopped taking small doses of anti-diabetic medications completely. These observations weren't in my imagination. As the years passed, supporting studies connecting testosterone deficiency with type 2 diabetes began to come out of the research community. I'm going to be quoting from some of these published studies in my next video. As you will see, there are quite a few of them, and they are all on my website www.thehiddendisease.com Despite this research, not one doctor I know ever checks the testosterone level of their diabetic patients. So, if you have type 2 diabetes, keep in mind that your testosterone level has in all likelihood never been checked. 
If you have friends or relatives with type 2 diabetes, keep in mind that it is highly unlikely that anyone has ever checked their testosterone levels either. I hope that I've at least sparked some interest with this video, because if I have, after the next one, you'll have no doubt but that testosterone deficiency is a basic, integral part of type 2 diabetes, and when it comes to caring for the disease, we live in an era of gross medical neglect. Once again, please help ensure that everyone has the opportunity to learn about the existence of this disease, talk about it, email the video links, become an activist for health. I'm Dr. E. Barry Gordon. Thank you for watching.